All right, we're going to continue on with chapter 5, covering sections 7 and 8 on forces in motion. So let's start off with an example. Um, in the overhead view of um, a, co a 2 kilogram cookie tin is accelerated at 3 meters a second in the direction shown by A. So they're giving you this acceleration in that direction. The acceleration uh, is caused by three horizontal forces, only two of which are known. So we know F1, which has a magnitude of 10 newtons, and F2, which has a magnitude of 20 newtons. So we have F1 going in this direction, and then F2 is following the y-axis up in that direction. They're asking what is the third force, F3, in unit vector notation and in magnitude angle notation. All right. So the net force on the tin is the sum of all the three forces, and it's related to the acceleration of the Newton's second law. So F is equal to ma. All right, so we start with our equation F net is equal to ma. What we want to do is add all the forces up on one side, and then let's set that equal to mass times the acceleration of the object. Now, if we re rearrange this equation to solve for F3, which is what we're trying to find, we would do that as such. So we're just... Um, subtracting everything over to the other side and leaving F3 by itself. Now, to solve this, like we did in kinematics, we need to break it into an F or an X component and a Y component. All right, so we'll say that our F3 in the X direction is going to be equal to mass times acceleration in the X direction minus force 1 in the X direction minus force 2 in the x direction. So we basically just took this equation and made everything just in the x direction. Okay, so at this point we can go ahead and start plugging some things in. So it's going to be mass uh, times the acceleration. The x acceleration is just going to be the overall acceleration times the cosine of 50 degrees because the acceleration is going uh, in this direction, 50 degrees from the x-axis. Alright, oops. And we're going to subtract F1 in the x direction again. So this is going to be cosine of negative 150 degrees. Because if you notice, F1 is going in this direction. Um, so this is either a positive 180 plus 30 or a positive uh, 210 or just a negative 150. All right. And then subtracting F2 only in the x direction. All right. So this is the cosine of 90 degrees, right? Because cosine gets us our x component. Well, if we look at this, 90 degrees, um, cosine of 90 is 0. So this term is actually just going to go to 0. Because, you know, if we look at um, our vector here, none of it is in the x direction. So we wouldn't expect an x component of force. All right. So now we can just go ahead and plug in our values. So this is going to be 2.0 kilograms times the acceleration, which is 3 meters a second squared, cosine 50, minus F1, which is 10 newtons, times the cosine of negative 150 degrees. Solve that out, and we get 12.5 newtons. So this is our x component. Now we want to find our y component. So that was our x. Now we want to find the y component. We're going to do the same thing. So our f3 in the y direction is equal to may minus f1y minus f2y. Right? And the same way, we're just going to go ahead and plug everything in. We'll just jump right to that step. So it's going to be 2.0 kilograms, which is the mass, times the acceleration, which is 3.0 meters a second squared, times our sine of 50, because we're trying to find the y component, so we're going to use sine, minus oops, 10 newtons, times the sine of negative 150, minus 20 newtons, times the sine of of 90. And the sine of 90 is just 1, so that whole last term is just going to be 20 newtons. Right. Now if we go ahead and solve that, we get 10.4 newtons. Alright, so now we have both of our components. We have the x component and the y component, so we can write that in unit vector notation. 
right? So our force F3 is just going to be 12.5 newtons in the I direction minus 10 newtons in the J direction. Now it also asks us to find this in magnitude angle notation. Uh, so all we would do is since we have two sides of a right triangle, use uh, Pythagorean theorem. Sorry. So F3 magnitude is just going to be the square root of our F3x squared plus our F3y squared. And that gets us 16 newtons. And then to find the angle, you just use the inverse tangent. Really, you can use any function because we know all the sides now. Uh, but we're just going to use the inverse tangent of our y component over our x component. And that gets you negative 40 degrees. All right, so you have, if you look here, we have it drawn here. So our F3 would expect in this direction, there's our angle of negative 40. All right, let's move on. All right, so gravitational force. Gravitational force is a body of a certain type of, uh, oh, excuse me, on a body, is a certain type of pull that is directed uh, toward a second body. Now, in most cases, um, gravitational force is going to be going down towards the Earth because that's the largest body. That's what's pulling on us. So suppose a body of mass m is in free fall with the free fall acceleration of magnitude g, right? Because we g is negative 9.8 meters a second squared. The force uh, that the body feels as a result is then uh, just the mass times gravity. Right? So our fg is just going to be whatever the person's mass is times our acceleration due to gravity. Now, the weight W of a body is equal to the magnitude of Fg um, of the gravitational force on the body. So the weight is just going to be Mg. So weight is actually a force, not a mass. We need to make that distinction. All right, so weight is a force, which is related to the mass, but it's also related to the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so you notice in the picture here, you have... Um, an object that's pulling down on a scale, the weight that it's pulling down is just going to be mass times gravity. Okay. Normal force is when a body presses against a surface, the surface, even a seemingly rigid one, deforms slightly and pushes on the body with a normal force, which is Fn. All right, so our normal force we can either use as Fn, or sometimes we're just going to use a big N with a vector symbol over the top, not to be confused with Newton, um, our unit. Either way is fine. Um, so that is perpendicular to the surface. So the key thing about a normal force is it's always perpendicular to the surface. That doesn't always mean it's going straight up, because um, let's say you had something on an incline, and you had an object here. The normal force is not going straight up. The normal force is going perpendicular to the surface. So at a 90 degree angle to the surface, right? Here's our 90 degree angle. Now the weight of this object is always going to be going down. So if you notice in this picture, we have the weight, or the force of gravity going straight down. Um, but if, if you had an object on an incline, the weight is just going straight down like so. It's not going along you know, it's not going opposite the normal force, it's actually going straight down. Okay, um, so to briefly go over this, in the figure, forces Fg and Fn are the only two forces acting on the block, and they're both vertical. Thus, for the block, we can write in second law for a positive upward y-axis. All right, so our uh, summation of forces in the y direction is just going to be our normal force minus our force of gravity, which is equal to MAY. Um, if you wanted to uh, find out what the acceleration is of this block, well, we would assume it's zero. If it's just sitting on the table, the acceleration is going to be zero. So if the acceleration is zero, you have Fn minus Fg is equal to zero. And you would see that the normal force is going to be equal to the gravitational force. So this isn't always the case, but when you have an object at rest and nothing else is pulling on it, the normal force happens to be equal to just mg, or the gravitational force. Okay. Now friction, we're going to briefly mention friction here, uh, but in the next chapter we're actually going to be going much more in depth with friction. Uh, but let's just quickly talk about what it is. So if 
uh, if we either slide or attempt to slide a body over a surface, the motion is resisted by a bonding force uh, between the body and the surface. So the surface and uh, the, basically down at the molecular level, the molecules are interacting uh, with the surface and that they're providing the sticking effect or this bonding effect and it wants to resist motion. So the resistance is considered to be a single force called the frictional force and we're going to use little f. Oops. We're going to use little f uh, for frictional force. This force is uh, directed along the surface opposite the direction of the intended motion. All right, so that's the key thing about frictional force. It's always opposing motion. All right, so frictional force opposes motion. All right, it's between two surfaces and it opposes motion. All right, another topic we want to talk about is tension. So when a cord is attached to a body and pulled taut, the cord pulls on the body with a force T directed away from the body and along the cord. So the symbol we're going to use for tension is T, capital T, right, T with uh, the arrow over the top to denote that it's a vector. So here's a couple different situations where we can have tension. All right, so if you have an object here, if you pull on the object, Right, so if you have a hand, you're pulling against the object, the tension from your hand go, is in that direction. Oops, sorry. Tension from your hand is in that direction. Um, but it's also going along the cord, going away from the object. Right? So the tension is always going away from, from the object. If I were to draw a free body diagram of this object, I would say that the tension is in this direction. You have mg going down, and you have a normal force going up. And that's it. Unless there may be some tension, uh, some friction. If you had friction in this object, then you would have friction going in the opposite direction. Okay. Now there's a couple of different situations with a pulley. So the tension is always going to be the same along the same cord. So even if there's a pulley involved, the cord is the same or the string is the same. So this tension here is going to be equal to this pulling tension here. They're going to be the same. All right. On the picture on the right, you have an, uh, something we call an Atwood machine, which is just one simple pulley, and you have a pulling force from one side or, or some weight on, on one side, and then another weight on the other side. And so if you're pulling down on one side, you have tension that goes up away from your hand, uh, but also the object on the other side has tension going up away from it. So again, the tension is always going to be going away from the object. Um, something that we should also mention is that the string is in the cord, or the, excuse me, the mass in the cord is going to be uh, negligible. We don't really consider it when we're talking about um, the total mass of the system, unless specifically said so, of course. All right. So the last topic uh, that we need to cover this chapter is Newton's third law. Uh, when two bodies interact, the forces on the bodies from each other are always equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. All right. So you have an example here. For the book and crate, we can write this law as a scalar relationship. All right. So the force from B to C is equal to the force from C to B. All right. So the book B is giving a force onto box or crate C. Crate C is also pushing back at the same force. Now as a vector relationship we would put a negative sign in front of one of them because you have the book B going its forces to the right and the crate is pushing back to the left so you have this opposite um, direction of force. And here's free body diagram shown of, of what the forces would look like. So the minus sign again means that these two forces are opposite directions. The forces between two interacting bodies are called third law force pairs. All right, so again, if you have something pushing against each other, it's going to be pushing back at the same force. Okay, that's it for this lecture. We'll pick it up with a few more examples uh, to finish off the chapter next time.